Every day, I wear a rubber band. Every single day of my life. And the reason I wear a rubber band is because I said that the day I could afford to buy a Rolex, I will put on and never take off a rubber band to teach me where I came from. Despite Robert Hirshhorn's success as a jury consultant today, he will never forget the trials he endured growing up in the early 1960s in Norwalk, Connecticut, with his three siblings and parents, Thelma and Leo. So my parents literally lived in a time when you had to stand in line to get food. Not like going to the grocery store to get whatever you want, but to just get enough food to feed you that day. Although Robert's childhood years were spent in a more prosperous time than his parents, he faced struggles of similar magnitudes. Being the product of a divorced family caused Robert a lot of confusion, especially in the 60s when divorce was an uncommon occurrence, making him question right from wrong. It was a very, really, a really trying time in my life. It's, it's the part of my life where I was kind of at the crossroad. I'm ashamed to say that I took the wrong road. So I ended up hanging around bad kids and making really bad choices and, and doing things that I know now I never should have done. I want you to imagine everything possible that a person could have done, I did. I skipped school. I smoked marijuana. I drank alcohol. I broke into a person's house. I vandalized vending machines. I remember doing graffiti. Um, those are just the things I can remember doing. I'm, I'm sure there were a lot of other equally terrible things that I did, but it was, it was a really terrible road. And I never saw myself as anything other than a pot smoking, beer drinking idiot. This era of rebellion was brought to an abrupt close when he was 16, after hearing a story of a man who he eventually realized was one of the most influential men in his life. So the smartest person I ever knew in my whole life, to this day, smartest person I ever met, the man had a third grade education. Smartest man I ever met. And so he tells me this story of how he joined the Tsar's army, and even though he was really a Bolshevik, and what was happening is the Tsar's army, he was in the communications division, and so whenever the Tsar's army was going to go to a certain village to attack it, they would let this person know, and he would then contact people in the village and warn them that the Tsar's coming. So he really saved hundreds if not thousands, if not tens of thousands of people's lives because he was warning them that the Tsar was coming to attack that village. And this person got caught and he got put on trial and he got sentenced to death and he got shipped off to Siberia to be executed, to be killed. And he escaped from Siberia and tracked all across Europe and jumped on a freighter boat and came to the United States. And the man I'm describing with the third grade education that had all this, he told me this story. This was my grandfather. And he told me this story when I was in high school and it absolutely changed my life because this man who had had such a profound impact on me, um, he very well could have been executed. He had never told my mother he had never told my father. I had two old, I had an older sister and two older brothers. He had never told any of them. The first one he ever told was me. But I think he was telling me that story to motivate me to find a direction. At that moment, I said, I'm going to do something that helps people. I want to be the kind of person that can help other people when they're in trouble. And so because of my grandfather, um, I totally changed uh, what I was going to do with my life. I wanted to be a criminal defense lawyer. I wanted to help people that were accused of crimes because, again, my grandfather had been sentenced to death and I wanted to make sure that never happened again to someone else, that an innocent person doesn't face that. After working full-time as a defense lawyer on 11 cases, Robert switched paths and began working as a jury consultant. I could help a lot of people as a lawyer, 
And as a jury consultant, I was going to get to work on civil cases and criminal cases. I was going to work in Texas and all over the country. And so it gave me an opportunity to kind of spread my wings and to, as I like to call it, Johnny Appleseed. Remember Johnny Appleseed? He was the one that would be sprinkling out the, the seeds all over to, to, to grow trees. And so I want the Johnny Appleseed all over the country as a jury consultant. The people and opportunities Robert has experienced in life have made him realize that giving back to the less fortunate is crucial, inspiring him to complete around 1,000 hours of pro bono work each year. There's people that aren't as lucky or aren't as fortunate or didn't get the second chance like I got. And so my point is, look, before we all get all wrapped up in, in what we're doing, we really need to try to help people that aren't quite up to where we are. We need to, it, it really is a lofty goal to help those that are less fortunate. And that's, look, I know that's kind of a lefty liberal point of view. I really believe it. it and it's, it, it's how well we treat the least fortunate in our society that's going to measure how great a nation we are. Given the lifestyle he has today, it was Robert's second chance in life that allowed him to emerge from obscurity and form his own future by never forgetting where he started. Mickey will tell you, and all my kids will tell you, that whenever they see me, they always see me wearing a rubber band because no matter how fancy a Rolex I have on this hand, I always have a rubber band because, on the other hand, because you want to stay balanced. So no matter how much success you're enjoying today, you could lose it all tomorrow. That's why it's important to be humble and to remember your beginnings. And that's what the rubber band does for me.